Hello, students of dynamics. Welcome to this practice problem overview. I was going to go ahead and draw this up and figure I might as well record it and then I can attach it to the practice problem, which is called Fly. It's out of section 16.7, relative motion of four bar linkages with acceleration. Okay, so let's talk through this problem. Uh, what we have here, and I've kind of done a ghost diagram in the back so you can see my diagrams really well. Given that both, again, my angular velocity uh, omega and my angular acceleration, I like to use purple for my accelerations alpha, are in the same direction, then we could say that this system is speeding up. Go ahead and move that over here, it makes more sense. And so the system is speeding up, and the other things to notice here is we have a fixed axis of rotation here at the middle of the wheel. We have another fixed axis of rotation over there at point C. And so basically point A is moving in a circle around this point here. Let's call it point O just to give it a name. Okay, so call that point O. And again, here's point C over here. And point B is moving in a circle around point C. Okay, and so that's going to leave one body here in potential general plane motion, um, which is going to be body AB, and we'll talk more about that as we work through. So the way that we work through this problem, and I'll talk about ICZVs as we do it, is that, and again, ICZVs are instantaneous centers of zero velocity. If A is moving in a circle around point O, and it's moving in a positive right-hand rule direction as we see here from the angular velocity omega, that means that the velocity has to be horizontal on the page. So we could write this as V sub A. And again, it's basically based upon an R vector, which you could draw upwards here on the page, right? This would be R of A, same thing as R of A relative to O. And again, all... Um, velocities are perpendicular to r vectors and this is based upon the equation v vector is equal to omega vector cross r okay v, v is equal to omega cross r we do the same thing for b now it probably stands to show that if a is shifting to the left then it's going to pull b with it and so let's go ahead and draw in that r vector so here is my r of b and then i also have a horizontal velocity here v of b so this gets kind of interesting. Now when we take a look at ICZVs, we know to find the ICZV of body AB, we draw extension lines perpendicular to both of these velocities. Okay, so perpendicular to both the velocities is going to be both vertical lines. So vertical line there, vertical line over here, right, extending all the way down through C. Two vertical lines will never meet in space, and we know that to find our ICZV that these would have to meet in space. So what this tells us if a body, body AB, doesn't have an ICZV, it works out that its angular velocity, so omega of AB, is equal to zero. Okay, a special case, a special case for this geometry and this geometry only, um, another fraction of a turn later, and that would no longer be true. Okay, but for this, in this location as we see it, angular velocity of AB is equal to zero. That makes VA equal to VB because basically it puts AB at this instant in translation. So your velocity in this problem would be really simple, right? You could do, you could find um, linear velocity VA by simply dividing, um, or sorry, um, yeah, d d uh, multiplying, sorry, your angular velocity of 2 times 0.3, that gives me a linear, linear velocity of A of 0.6. Um, and then VB is also going to have a linear velocity of 0.6 to the left. Now, omega of BC is going to be a little bit different because it has a longer radius arm, right? And so um, when we then go to compute the angular velocity of um, CB, it's going to be a little bit smaller than 2 because we're going to divide that value of 0 0.6 by 0 0.4 versus over here would have been divided by 0 0.3. Okay, so again, just reusing over and over and over either the vector equation V is equal to omega cross R or V is equal to omega times R when we're dealing with just the scalar values. All right, let's look at the acceleration piece now. So we said that the angular velocity and angular um, acceleration are in the same direction. So uh, because of that, we're saying the system is speeding up. Put that in quotes. We know that that isn't 100% always true, that every single linear and angular term will al always be um, speeding up, but it's a good general assumption. Probably true for 90% of different linear and angular terms. All right, so we certainly know that the wheel centered at point O, that's speeding up, okay? So my, my tangential acceleration, which would be this term right here, so this would be my A of A sub T, 
tangential acceleration at point A that is in the direction of my velocity, right? Because again, the wheel's speeding up. Um, let's go ahead and do the other tangent here. The other tangent would be um, this one here. So this would be the acceleration of B tangential. Again, assuming that um, CB is speeding up, we could then also draw in here, right? We've kind of vis visually already proven that our omega um, this would be omega of B, C. Again, this omega over here would be called this O, A. And we get that subscript over here, alpha of O, A. All right, so also we said that we're assuming that this is speeding up here. So this would be my alpha of B, C. All right, let's talk a little bit about the relative acceleration and velocity between A and B. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and use R of B relative to A. There's no right or wrong order to this. I'll write the equation here in just one second. So this is R of B relative to A. Noting what we're looking for here, or what the equation we're using, is the if we're using velocity of B relative to A, we know that that um, has to cancel. So we're going to basically have VB over here on the left equal to the a plus velocity of b relative to a. Keep in mind on this again, when we multiply the subscripts, b must be equal to a times b over a. And that is true for the equation we wrote. Therefore, b equals b and we're good. All right, so this velocity of b relative to a is based upon a cross product. It is omega of body ab crossed with r of b over a. Okay, so in this case, we didn't have an omega, right? This omega was equal to zero. But just because the omega is equal to zero doesn't mean the acceleration is also equal to zero. So I'm going to be forced to do here is I'm going to be forced to pick a direction, assumed direction of alpha. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one. Alpha of AB, I'm going to assume is positive there from the right-hand rule. So going off that assumption, let's additionally draw my relative acceleration Okay, relative acceleration here, we are talking about just a touch. So now we're looking at the acceleration of B. I'm going to write the tangent in normal terms. Acceleration of B tangent plus acceleration of B normal is equal to acceleration of A tangent plus acceleration of A normal plus the relative terms. Acceleration of our B relative to A tangent and the acceleration of B relative to A normal. Okay, so there's all four different terms. So again, A and B are in fixed axis rotation around their respective fixed axis pins. And so um, let's go ahead and draw, let's kind of check them off the list here. So I've got acceleration of B drawn, let's do an acceleration of B normal. We know that acceleration of B, I'll scroll back up here to add another equation next to my, my list. So again, here we have alpha, excuse me, a sub t on the left hand side is equal to alpha cross r and then a sub n normal acceleration is equal to um, omega squared in the negative r vector direction all right so we've already included our a sub t's right and again since we said this was speeding up uh, you'll notice in the structure of velocity and acceleration they look exactly the same it's just omega cross r versus alpha cross r so let's do these normals normals are always opposing our r vector Okay, so one of those normals here for B is going to be back along this R vector. I could label this as my acceleration of B normal. Acceleration of A normal is in the same direction, parallel over here, opposing that R vector, acceleration of A normal. Now let's take a look at these two terms. Um, the tangential acceleration, relative tangential of B relative to A, and relative tangential of um, the, sorry, the relative normal of B relative to A. These two write down in our equation. All right, so our alpha is positive. Check. Okay, so we're going to cross that into this R vector right here. Okay, so either do a slide and curl or a three finger. So if you go three finger, I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of alpha, which is basically my, I get positive from right hand rule. So it should be thumbs up coming out of your screen or page. I'm going to point my index finger down along the R vector. So my fingernail on the index finger is pointing toward point B. It's a little bit awkward. You might have to rotate your screen um, to do that, get a little nimble there. And what we find is that our tangential, our relative tangential coming out of B right here, perpendicular to that R vector, there is our acceleration 
of b relative to a tangential. And again here, the acceleration of b relative to a normal, acceleration of b relative to a normal, goes back opposing that r vector. Now, one thing to note, because of this, the motion in this system, we said here that the omega of AB was zero. Notice right here that the normal acceleration of body AB is based upon that omega. Therefore, this term for this problem goes to zero. Again, only because the omega goes to zero for this problem does that term go away. Okay, so then now we've included um, all of the terms that are non-zero. I could also cross out down here. This term again goes to zero as omega of body AB is equal to zero. So again, that's a brief walkthrough of the mapping on this problem. Once we do the mapping, then we can get into doing the cross products. Um, for this problem, given the majority of the terms are um, horizontal and vertical, right, of these, of these um, acceleration terms, I certainly would stick with a horizontal, vertical x and y axes to solve this problem. So the only components you'd be dealing with would be the two-dimensional components First of R, right, and then R as you cross it into A sub T. The nice thing when you take that cross product, you can see right here, right, this is that tangential acceleration you get out of that cross product. And that tangential acceleration is perpendicular to the R vector, hence has a positive X, positive Y, with the Y component being bigger um, than the X component. Again, you can just see that from the direction of this vector. Thank you all for viewing this video today. Hope you learned uh, something important from it, and you're having a great day.